Palav, hi. Good to have you with us. How have you been? Very well, Ashu. Uh, it's been crazy times, but uh, things have been good. Thank you. And I hope you are doing well as well. Thank you, Palav. Thank you for asking. Yes, I think all of us are doing well at uh, Asia Tech and, uh, you know, trying to, uh, you know, exciting times, right? I think living in the, in the middle of exciting times, talking to a lot of founders, uh, you know, we couldn't have asked for a, uh, you know, this, these are, these are, these are, these are very different kind of times, right? These are transformative times. We haven't, none of us uh, ever experienced such times, right? And in our capacity, you know, we're getting to talk to founders and really understand and, 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 you know, kind of feel that shift and see that shift, right? Uh, in the minds of consumers, you know, with stakeholders at large. Uh, I think this transformation has been phenomenal, right? So in that sense, yes, I think it's been an exciting time. Um, I've been particularly looking forward to this conversation, Pallav, right? Given that, uh, you know, with uh, YOLO, uh, you've been changing the landscape of school education, right? With, uh, you know, your website says 3,000. Uh, offline, uh, a much larger number that you've mentioned to, 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 to me about. But you know, you're really sort of changing the, the landscape of school education, right? And I think school education is something which is which has really gone through, uh, which has been the most impacted in many, many ways, right? And and my sense is, uh, you know, uh, this is a change which is a shift, a permanent shift, right? We could possibly look at newer models of education for students that would come up, but I think these are always models which will which will be digitally empowered and digitally enabled, right? Uh, I don't think we're going to go ever go back to you know, physical models the way they kind of existed, right? That's because it becomes a very interesting and exciting conversation because you are powering these education institutions pretty much full stack to go out and cater to their customer, right? Uh, which is the parent and the kid, right? Uh, not just only to deliver, but to assess the quality of impact that has been created, which is just so much more important in a, in a digital environment, right? So this becomes an exciting conversation at that level. Uh, but before we do that, right, I'd love you to take us to a quick round of, uh, you know, introduction. Uh, you've been an entrepreneur on on across many businesses, uh, you know, a serial entrepreneur uh, to a to a great extent. Some of them have been extremely successful. I'd love you to give us a quick round of introduction, and we move into the discussion for the day. Great. Um, so first of all, thank you for having me here, uh, Ashu. And um, a very quick introduction. I'm kind of by education and engineer from IIT. Uh, graduated way back in 2000. I spent some time in the US. Um, working for a company called NVIDIA. Right. Uh, NVIDIA used to be very small at that point of time and I had a great time being part of very early cohort of engineers that they had hired. Right. Um, I spent a few years in Silicon Valley, then came back and I've been an entrepreneur since then. Um, I started uh, Nolarity, um, which is a cloud telephony company. It was funded by Sequoia and Mayfield. The company has done well. Right. Um, I built that over a good five years, then moved out, started another business, uh, uh, called Fast Fox, uh, which was an online real estate space, right. got acquired by uh, Housing.com, and uh, now uh, doing Yulo. Uh, and uh, it's kind of interesting uh, what we are doing at Yulo. We are kind of trying to reimagine how the schools can be in today's day and age, right. and working very closely with them. Yeah. Super, super, Paula, that, That's 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 you know that's a lot of work that you've done, right? I mean, I've had the opportunity of knowing you up close and personal, right? That just calls for a very different incentive in intensity, energy, deep thinking, right? Because, you know, India is, a, is an extremely dynamic market. To create, go out and create multiple solutions just calls for so much, right? Uh, and we are a complex market. We're going to cover a lot of that through the course of conversation. Uh, but look, my first question in, in our conversation today, right? In our first conversation today uh, is what's the construct of uh, YOLO? I mean, this is, this is essentially what we are here to discuss. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you know, you're empowering institutions to deliver so much more, right? You're actually a partner in the process, right? Uh, tell us a little more about the construct of uh, of YOLO. Uh, what is this uh, as a company? What are the what are the pieces that you're offering, right? And tell me a little more about the partnership that you build with schools, right? That relationship with schools is something that I want to understand. Yeah. So let me let me talk about um, the philosophy of YOLO, and uh, what we believe. Uh, so YOLO stands for uh, unlimited online learning opportunities. Right. And what we feel is that, um, you know, uh, I think everybody understands that uh, internet uh, and technology can play a massive role uh, in education. Mm -hmm. The problem really is that uh, how it is really playing out in education. Sure. You would have normally expected that um, internet is coming uh, in education. It will make it more accessible, sure. cheaper, more affordable. Mm -hmm. And in some sense, bridge the divide that is there in right. the society uh, mm -hmm. at large, right? But 
actually what has happened uh, is the exact opposite of that. Uh, the ed tech has, is already uh, kind of increasing the digital divide that is there in India. Sure. So, and that is not because of the nature of ed tech per se, but it is uh, uh, to do with how ed tech is being taken to the audience. Okay. So I'll give, I'll kind of um, uh, help you visualize this. Sure. So in India, the ed tech solutions uh, are typically priced at about 250 to $300 a year. Okay. So about give or take, uh, you know, 20, 25,000 bucks uh, mm -hmm. per year. Right. And this is a lot of money. Okay. Lot of money from uh, the point of view of the mass of India. If you look at mm -hmm. who can afford this, very, very few people in India can afford this. Right. In India, we are talking about uh, about 270 million kids who are going to uh, schools. And when you look at how much money do they pay for the school where the child is spending like six to seven hours a day, mm -hmm. the 50% of Indian schools are charging less than 500 rupees a month. 70% of Indian schools are charging less than 1000 rupees a month. Right. So the school fees, and then this is kind of very different from the image of the uh, public school that right. I and you would be sending our kids to, but 70% of India who is sending their kids to private schools, their fees is less than 12,000 rupees and a subscription of an edtech solution, which is right. supposed to supplement uh, your school education is costing twice as much. That is the uh, problem that the edtech solutions, which are good, are unaffordable for the masses of India. That is the big problem in edtech, the way it is practiced in India. Right. Now, when you kind of go a level deeper and try to understand why is this problem really there? The reason for that is that we have not figured out how to take the edtech solution to masses. Right. There is no distribution channel available. Mm -hmm. So people have created wonderful products. Right. And while you know the first name that will come uh, in our mind is for somebody like Baijus, but reality is there are a whole lot of other people who have made great solutions. Right. But people have not figured out how to take it to the masses. Mm -hmm. So we are still trying to sell education solutions like, uh, if I can say, like vacuum cleaners, like right. Eureka Forbes, right. where, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, there are sales guys who will come to your home and give a demonstration of the vacuum cleaner and say how good it is and then kind of schedule you to buy. This right. is the pre-internet way of doing things. Like, you know, Netflix did not sell you the subscription right. like that, right? They had a right. beautiful product. They said, hey, try us out for free and we're right. sure that you will like it. People subscribe to it and then they pay it and when they don't want it, they'll actually, you know, when they're going off for a vacation, they'll kind of cancel the subscription or pause the subscription. That is how internet works worldwide. Right. right. That is not how the edtech works. Mm -hmm. And that I think is a problem. People, the distribution is not figured out. We think that uh, going forward, five years forward, seven years right. forward, edtech should become one tenth of the cost of what it is today. Right. We are talking about 2000 rupees, 3000 rupees per year instead of uh, 30,000 rupees per year. Sure. To do that, we have to create efficient distribution solutions. Mm -hmm. And that is at the heart of what we are trying to create at ULO. Interesting. So we want to make EdTech super cheap. Uh, we want to have the best in class products available to masses of India at right. one tenth of the price. And to do that, we have to figure out the distribution model. And the answer to that is very simple. In one word, the answer to that is the school. Right. Right. The, and when you kind of start dissecting it, what you realize is that every single child who needs to buy an edtech solution, you do not have to find that child on Google or Facebook right. and pay money. He's right. already going into a school, right? If that school becomes a partner, your cost of the evangelizing that solution becomes zero. Right. So that is the big idea of Yulo. We are saying we are kind of reimagining the ed tech distribution. Right. And the way we do that is in partnership of, with the school. So we go to the school and we tell them, why don't you partner with us? And we need to have a reason for that partnership. 
and that reason is the school management software school communication sure. software that we give out and that right. software we give out free of cost interesting that is yolo in a nutshell so school, we partner with the school create access to the end customer and then we offer uh, solutions to that uh, uh, child uh, which the parent can choose to buy not choose to buy does not matter right. but that cost of selling becomes zero so you only pay for the product you do not pay for the salesman that is the internet model of edtech that's what yolo does interesting uh, but there is a very interesting point that you highlighted right and and that you know you and you kind of commented on the distribution side of say for example edtech right uh, i'm going to spe- more specifically talk of uh, you know school education right now there have been umpteen softwares that have been there right uh, this is not for example a new space right uh, you know we've had uh, the works of uh, you know educom for example right uh, a company which went out to get listed right was a was one of the best performing stocks of the world time uh, so we've had models where people have tried to crack this right uh, you know there have been models where people wanted to make it free uh, to the school to the student right and over a period of time build a relationship where they wanted to charge right unfortunately and and i'm sure you can you know you can talk more on this right education system in india has been massively bureaucratic right if you are a founder who directly approaches a parent there's always a possibility that a school could and and say the school is not a stakeholder in that relationship the possibility of for the parent the relevance decreases because the school is not endorsing it or subscribing to it that's number one number two yeah. if you do go to a school uh, the school is going to basically buy it you buy from you at a deep discount and eventually price the parent in full right uh, yeah in respect of you know that's that's the channel that has existed right uh, so while there have been many players who who really sort of try to create impact because of this bureaucracy and because of this you know farming off and passing off of cost has continued to happen tech adoption for example was the slowest across across education systems do you think that's a that's a fair understanding in your case you making is, it free right the, the, how is that changed yeah so actually what you're saying is correct and then there is a there is a parallel uh, to understand it and that is how the world is changing so uh see we have seen the world of vas and the right. telecom and the relationship of the vas operators with telecom right. so the telecom was the bad boy mm-hmm. and they never let the vas guys really take innovation to the customer because they created walled gardens and did not allow access right. to happen to the customer and the vast guys but always commoditized so airtel used to keep there was a time when airtel used to keep like it and not only airtel every single telecom provider 80% of the money that uh, people were paying right. Uh, right and then the vendor was getting 20% and the vendor has to do all the work and 80% toll is like you know you have to pay otherwise right. you're out of the system and then the world changed to ott Right. right and then all of these people actually created super valuable businesses on top of the fiber that is laid and they commoditized the telecom below right. them and that is that is what internet really does right it allows you to form a relationship with the end customer and that is how, what we also think that we think that a lot of people have tried to create vas offerings by the school and the reality of it is that school has commoditized them not let them uh, become relevant enough and uh, we are kind of uh, and we are kind of cognizant of that so we are kind of very clear about how do we want to play this game uh, we are uh, you know so what we do is we give a mobile app to the school which right. reaches in the hands of the parents mm-hmm. and the pa- and it's a yolo app right not the school white labeled app okay right and these are all conscious calls now the relationship that we have with the parent is a direct relationship mm-hmm. and the uh, the child is spending time on the school activities but there is a entire world of yulo right. in the yulo app mm-hmm. in which the child is able to do a lot of after school activities right and all of those activities is something that uh, yulo offers and the school does not have a role to play over there so it's like so imagine the time of the child it is time right. spent in school and school activities and the time spent after the school in the after school activities right so the partnership that we have created with the school is we have said you know the world is moving digital right you need a platform to go to the digital world right now you can you know 
uh, with the kind of money that you're willing to pay, you can get a crappy vendor to make a crappy application for you. Right. Or you can come to Yulo and we'll give you best in class digital platform right. free of cost. What we will do is all your school stuff can become digital, but the after school stuff, let us have a direct relationship with the end customer. Right. That is the nature of the partnership. Interesting. So we will, uh, you do your school stuff free of cost, and we will build a direct relationship with that child in the after school hours. And if we make some money, uh, we will find a reasonable uh, way to also compensate you for giving us the access. So that is our relationship uh, with this with the school, and the idea is that you go uh, so deep into the school right. that the school actually starts enjoying um, what you're bringing on the table because you are also making the school look good. A right. lot of the goodness that the parents are experiencing ultimately is also helping the school. And I'll give you an example of this. Sorry. So what? Uh, and and this is kind of like how we have kind of uh, trying to ensure that we do not get commoditized like a vast vendor in this market right. uh, and have a direct relationship with the customer. So what we will do, for example, in the after school hours, we will get children to attend a lot of hobby classes. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, children learn making very beautiful uh, art and craft and stuff like that. And when sure. they do that, we are able to take that content and pipe it back into the Facebook pages of the school. Interesting. So uh, now the school looks starts looking very good because this school web right. school Facebook wall has suddenly has students coming and posting a variety of things. Right. Um, uh, which the ch children are doing. The school actually has done nothing but signed up on Yulo. Right. And this action is happening, but the goodwill is getting accrued to the school. So that is the kind of win-win that we create for the school. So schools are super happy with what we do for them, and that is kind of resulting in. Uh, an acquisition speed that is unheard of in the market. So we right. are able to acquire about uh, 500 odd schools a month now. Wow. And these are the schools that are coming without any physical presence on the ground. Right. So uh, we have got today, uh, Ashu, schools in Kashmir. We have got schools in Kanyakumari, even in Nagaland. In Kohima, mm -hmm. we have school. Wow. Uh, and all of them come remotely. There's a lot of word of mouth by which schools are coming in. Right. Um, but yeah, that is the model. Very interesting. You know, Palav, like, like a bunch of questions that have that have come to me, right? And the point that you've made, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna try and, and, and cover all of that, right? Uh, one by one. I think what you know, you, what you what you highlighted is and I completely understand, right? But essentially, uh, you know, in the environment that you live and I live in, right, I find it difficult to fathom, you know, the, the school passing on you know uh, that 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 essentially that vantage point or the the position of power that they hold right uh, in our lives uh, by giving it to you right uh, so my, my my of course my, my natural question is which are the schools that you're going after are these the private you know visible brands that you're going after or are these the mid tier yeah. schools which are not necessarily very high on brand uh, but of course uh, have to contribute because there is a certain uh, ownership that they have yeah. towards and accountability that they have towards schools. So which are the kind of schools that you're going after? Which are the schools that are responding and adopting to it the fastest? Yeah, so that's a very good question. And uh, I think that's coming from the uh, extensive knowledge of India that you have, Ashu. So uh, I'll, I'll lay it out for you. So India has got about uh, 270 million students. Right. 40% of that goes to a private school. Mm -hmm. Right. So I would argue that anybody who has got any money to buy any ed tech sure. is already sending the child to a private school. Right. So very few people uh, are uh, like, you know, uh, so the people who are left out actually are have a lot of aspiration for the kids, but sure. really do not have any means to fulfill those aspirations. Right. So now 40% is going to private schools. And then within that, if you were to kind of make a uh, pyramid, what you will realize is that uh, there are like top three to four percent schools in this country, sure. which are super snobbish, Right. super snobbish. <laughs> uh, these are the kind of schools that you have to get the local MLA to make a phone call to right. get your child inside uh, those schools. Minus that, the bottom 95% of the schools are actually thriving 
or trying to thrive in a super competitive environment because their right. brands are not very strong right they are these schools are confined into the geography that they are physically present in they have this catchment area which overlaps with a lot of other schools right so they are and at the heart of it these schools are fixed cost businesses every single expense in the school starting from the rental of the premise to the teacher cost all those salaries are fixed right. and all of them want you know additional seats to get filled up because that is pure profit there is no right. cost to that right so we work with this bottom 95% schools and do not care about the top 5% schools uh-huh. where you and i would be sending our children right. to right so they are actually not the target audience uh, very interesting. and uh, yeah so these are, our schools would have an average fees of about 1500 rupees a month interesting uh, right so we also cater to schools where the fees is like 500 600 rupees a month and uh, the beauty is that all of these schools in their uh, in their mind uh, they are fairly progressive because mm-hmm. what they're realizing is that uh, uh, you know technology is something that is for real Right. Parents who are their paying customers, mm-hmm. they are realizing that technology is for real, and they do not want to get left behind. Right. They think that they can actually catch up to the top schools in the country by adopting technology, Very especially when it is now coming free of cost. Absolutely, I think I think what you're really talk I, I think what you talk about, Pallav, is is extremely powerful. I think it's you you, know, you kind of you know I I continue to talk of arbitrage that exists between tier A city and tier two city, right? And I think I think you know. while of course my question to most of the founders has been that you know how are they tackling this change in aspiration i think you are essentially enabling a lot of that you are actually filling in that gap by making this information available right and i think some of the spots and areas that you highlighted palav are actually where the real aspiration of india is kind of building up right uh, i i have a bunch of questions on the impact that you for example are creating but i'm going to cover that a little later i have uh, i want to i want to cover some very specific points right uh, currently around the school uh, and the and the and the mindset that schools have operated for the longest time right now one of the changes that we've seen pallav uh, of late is is the government's intervention right so for example uh, aam aadmi party is an example in india uh, you know which has been doing phenomenally well with the schools right and the school infrastructure overall right now what they've been doing and uh, what they've been doing is uh, you know while of course there are many startups that are offering great solutions and brilliant solutions like yourself uh, what they are they've enabled is given that state is actually now entering these 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 pockets right and these gap areas uh, the the money available is much higher that essentially means that their automatic choice becomes the larger players right in the game who are offering more institutionalized solutions for example say you know uh, microsoft and a bunch of others right uh, the money part which you alluded to is now taken care of right for the student it becomes free of cost right uh, what happens in environment like that right and this is now a tendency which a lot of other states are also looking at right uh i agree that a lot of this is essentially happening with government school school infrastructure uh but it still states entering this right uh, states could tomorrow take up a bigger responsibility of ensuring that you know such tech player is funded by the state for all the students uh in that 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 particular region right what happens to the newer players uh in an environment yeah. like that? so it's a it's a very very uh, i would say complex landscape that we are talking about right. and um, uh, so let me kind of uh, so i am kind of uh, uh, been following what aam aadmi party for example has done in uh, delhi in fact i wrote an article right. on that uh, before they got reelected uh, so i have some background doing uh, sifology so i can kind of i just right. knew that aam aadmi party is going to come and sweep uh, the elections Right. so and the the major reason for that was actually their reforms in the education right but when you kind of actually start slicing that down what do you find is something very very interesting right. uh, which is um, that what they did was uh, if you think about delhi as a state right delhi as a state is very different the only state that is similar to delhi is goa right uh, other than that uh, you know these states are much bigger in area right and the schooling as a system the all the schools would be spread in like uttar pradesh right they'll spread all the way from you know saharanpur to robertsganj <laughs> right uh, but, but in delhi all of that is confined in a you know uh, 30 to 30 by 30 square kilometer kind of a thing right 900 square kilometers everything is packed right there inside right. that so you know you can operationalize it very beautifully it right. was something that was like a 
an opportunity always there to go and reform it. Now, when right. you kind of talk about the actual reform in education, what have they done really is to do things which are most evident to the parents. So, you know, they have not tried to go change the uh, pedagogy too much. Right. But they said here, fundamentally, the teacher is not coming. The you know the parents know that the nothing the government schools are not providing education because the school which is supposed to run till one thirty, the child is back home at twelve o'clock. Right. And the reason that is so because the there is no you know gate in the school, there is nobody manning the gate. So right. teachers also leave. The children also leave. Eventually, you know, children come home early, which right. means that children is not studying. So let me just go and tighten the boundary around it. Let me make right. the buildings look fancier, toilets look cleaner. And the people will start feeling that the government schools have improved. Right. So I think the intervention uh, of was a little bit cosmetic. Right. But the perception was, was massive. And it is very interesting because I, I'll tell you, uh, there's been so much research uh, on, on why private schools and private schools in India are also no better, by the way. Right. So they are not giving very high quality education. Right. And there's so much research on that to understand the mindset of the people who are actually running those schools. Right. And what came out of that study after study is very important, is that people who are running private schools, for example, they are uh, running a business. Right? Right. They're kind of in it to make, uh, make money. All those schools are registered as non-profit trust. So now these guys care about what is it that parents understand. Right? So you know, so the studies say that the maximum impact in the quality of education can come if you train the teachers better. Right. Okay. And, uh, but the reality is that the parents are not able to differentiate between a trained teacher and an untrained teacher. Mm -hmm. So what is the point of spending the money on training of the teacher? Your customer will not understand, right? And the, the outcome of education is not going to come instantaneously. It is not like fast food. It will right. take like years to come. Whether a child will become smart, right. learned or not, it will take years. Absolutely. And child and the parent is not able to distinguish whether I have invested, you know, few hundred dollars in training the teacher or not. Right. So instead, the the choice that the school owners make is around improving the infrastructure of the school making right. the buildings look cleaner, sharper, and not on the teacher training. This is the, this is the formula. And you go to any private school, the building will look very good. Right. It will look sweeped, clean. Right. And uh, uh, they will, that is where the dollar is getting invested in private school, right. not on the training. And that is a formula that Amadmi party actually applied to government schools. Interesting. And it had fabulous response. Right. Because parents suddenly felt, yeah, my school building, it used to be in shambles. Now look at right. the buildings, how many parties done like, and that is actually one thing that you can fix overnight. If you have to actually go train the teachers, uh, uh, you know, uh, improve on the pedagogy, it will take years. Right. It is not a quick fix. Uh, but that is what has happened uh, in political landscape. The good news, however, is that because even without understanding the nuances of it, right. because it has happened in Delhi, there are enough and more states which are trying to replicate the formula. Right. And what that means for the students is great news because the government will start putting their act together for the government schools. Right. And the private schools have to then improve their performance. Otherwise, the people will start shifting from private schools to government schools. Right. So I think the small thing that has happened in Delhi is, I think, harbinger of a very big change that is going to happen in India and it will take time. It will take five, six years. Right. But it is bound to happen. It's a very, very big thing in India that is happening. I think I think, a I think government. Yes. Right. In 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 like what 75 years of existence of this country has come to power on not on a uh, some random issue, but on the right. issue of education. It is very good news for the country. I think, Pallav, you know, there are so many important, interesting points that you've highlighted and I kind of completely agree with you that, uh, uh, you know, while they've done what they've done, right? And it's, it's kind of difficult to scale it in larger, uh, yeah. you know, larger regions, right? For example, say, you know, Punjab, Gujarat and many other states that are going to be in for elections, right? I think it's going to be interesting to see how they scale. But I think that intent is very, very important. And my sense is uh, that will possibly eventually create space for 
you know, more holistic place, right? Uh, because, you know, to deliver it across so many other places to be, uh, I think, I think you know, pure technology players will not be able to offer a solution, right? I think you'll need a player who understands that landscape 360 degrees, who understands student, understands impact, understands, you know, teacher training you highlighted, right? I think that's, again, very, very important. Enabler has to be, ex has to have a certain exposure, right? If they do not have that exposure, they'll never be able to give a kid the right, uh, you know, foundation to build on top of, right? Uh, yeah. And I think, yeah. I think, I think it possibly just opens up a much larger play for players like yourself, right? Uh, you know, because you're doing a much yeah. deeper yeah. engagement uh, in many forms and ways, right? Uh, Palab, I'm going to, uh, I think, you know, when you talk of schools, right? I think you've kind of alluded to it uh, that, you know, you, you're kind of onboarding almost 500 schools a month, right? Now, when you talk of schools, uh, right, uh, many entrepreneurs, you know, who've tried to build solutions for, for, for schools in the past, right, have continued to grapple with, uh, you know, the bureaucracy that has existed, right? Uh, What's worked for you? Is it COVID which has worked for you or you've been able to navigate through the right people in the leadership across schools, right? Because typically that is a very, very sticky area. Is always time consuming, yeah. energy consuming and that doesn't move, right? Uh, in perpetuity, right? And you know what I'm talking about, right? That, that, uh, is, that, is, that is correct, right? What's worked so for you? If I were to... Yeah. So I would say, um, um, I think my own experience uh, doing uh, nullarity uh, has helped me a lot. Uh, because this is, at the end of the day, the schools that we're talking about are the sure. small and medium businesses of India. And that is the kind of very uh, very similar uh, audience that we kind of surveyed in Nolarity. And what sure. we realized was uh, that time the belief in the market was, this I'm talking about 10 years back at Nolarity, mm -hmm. that if you have to go sell technology to small businesses, right. then you have to physically go and meet them. And what we figured out at Nullarity was, you know, that is not correct. If you really apply yourself right. uh, both in the product as well as in the go-to market, mm -hmm. then you can simplify your product and your pitch to a point where you can sell on telephone. Right. That is the formula that uh, uh, like we kind of tried to replicate at Yulo. Mm -hmm. And that has worked very well for us because what we do now is we are able to kind of uh, explain our product mm -hmm. over telephone and uh, like, you know, right. give a demo on Zoom right. and people are able to understand what we're talking about. Interesting. So it is about simplifying it. Uh, the good news is that, you know, people are comfortable with WhatsApp as a platform. Right. Uh, you know, they're using that in their private lives. What we tell them effectively is that we will give you WhatsApp for your school. Right. But this is a WhatsApp that is designed for your school. This is not right. like the WhatsApp that you use for uh, public affairs. And then they're able to relate to it. They say, oh my God, every every single class will become a group. And then you can kind of send messages to on that group. Right. And by the way, the phone numbers of the students will remain private. Right, like in WhatsApp, where these numbers become exposed because you have, uh, you know, lady teachers, you have girl students. You do not want their numbers to be floating around. Right. Um, plus, you can control whether parents can come back and contact you or not. All of those channels you can control. Sure. It becomes a very, it becomes a pitch that people are able to understand and visualize, and then you are able to give a demo remotely. Right, and the product is um, very sweet in terms of. Um, uh, not being priced, right. so people people lap it up. There is effort at the end of the school to enroll everybody, but uh, I think very clear product interventions at each step allows us to acquire schools remotely. It is not. Um, uh, I, I would say it is uh, the way we do it. In the end, is simple, but uh, simple is hard. <laughs> I was just easy. about to say that. I was just about to say that. But listen, don't you don't you come across this disbelief, right? Uh, you know, uh, how could something as as amazing as what you built, right, come for free, right? Don't you come come across this, right? Because you know they've been tuned, right? Yeah. Management across schools yeah. have been tuned to buy, right? Uh, you know, don't they get into a position that you know what's the cash, right? Uh, doesn't that yeah, create so a little of confusion? Yeah, so it, it, it does. And then, you know, so when we kind of offer it for free, we basically put a caveat that it is free for next two years. And after that, it is, uh, right? It's like almost like WhatsApp, right? Remember right. for a, so long, WhatsApp used yeah. to say, <laughs> we're going to charge you like one rupee one per dollar. month, kind of some number, one dollar, yeah? Yeah. So that, that basically it was when you actually come up, reality is that, you know, 
uh, Facebook uh, is free for us as customers. Of course, right. we are their product and we end up seeing all the advertisements. <laughs> right. But uh, it is free, right? Google is free, uh, right. free to use. And that is the model of the internet, right? The internet products are built. And then you had kind of talked about Educom. So I think I have a very strong point of view there. Uh, internet companies get built on usage right. and not on breakage. Sure. Right. So uh, the example of a breakage company uh, would be Groupon. Right. Right. So they, they, they hope that people do not come and actually use the coupons that they're buying. Right. And, uh, but, but, you know, so many people started using the Groupon coupons that the merchants went bankrupt, right? People who were given a <laughs> discount on five star right. hotels, hoping people will not turn up. They were shocked because everybody right. turned up. Similarly, Educomp. The problem with Educom was that it was a company that um, uh, their core product, it was not getting used inside the schools. Right. So the schools bought it only to show to the parents that they are modern. Right. So, yeah, it so was, going back to, right? It was a fad. Back to, yeah, it was a fad. Now, understand this, right? Uh, again, to the research that we were talking about, that why do school owners, what do school owners spend on? So school owners like to spend on painting the walls, right. on the infrastructure. Now, suddenly that infrastructure became the Educom smart TV infrastructure. So they said, yeah, we are also smart. <laughs> so, uh, right. so they put on this Educom uh, smart boards, but nobody used that. Right. Uh, it really did not become part of the uh, school pedagogy. Children were not spending time on it. Uh, there are schools that we come across and these are schools where the fees is like, you know, less than 10,000 rupees a year. Right. And when we talk to them, they say, yeah, yeah, we also have smart class. They said, <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Uh, what they will have is like one class out of the entire school will have this whole Educom kind of a setup from <laughs> some Educom home. Right. And there will be one period in the entire week on that smart class, but that is just there so that it can be put on the brochure that the school is smart. Interesting. So that is kind of um, how I think that was the reason Educom did not work. I think otherwise it was a great idea. If Educom could have extended in the world of internet where people could spend a lot of time on the platform, learning stuff, teacher could spend time on promoting new educational resources and all, it could have been a great company actually. Right. I think it just happened much before uh, the world was ready for it. No, I think a uh, very interesting point that you highlighted, uh, Pallav. Pallav, uh, you know, one question that, you know, when you talk of edtech, right? And I think this is something which has been discussed across all quarters, right? Um, we we're now, I mean, seeing the third wave, right? Uh, we're in the middle of third wave. Uh, it, it's kind of taking off. Uh, and, you know, all of us are hoping that it does not continue for, for much longer time, right? Education as an industry, right? Uh, you know, because of all the, all the money that has been invested in creating this infrastructure, right? Building this inefficiency, feeding this inefficiency, right? Um, you know, every single owner of every single school, irrespective of whatever band that they operate in, the paying the student paying band, right, or the fee band that they operate in, wants students to come back to this infrastructure, right? Uh, parents also want students to go back to this infrastructure, right? There's this entire, uh, you know, so pretty much all the stakeholders, all the relevant stakeholders, want this 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 the, in, the physical infrastructure to come back, right? Where does that take digital applications, right? Uh, what happens to digital applications in an environment like that, right? Uh, and, and and I say that largely because, like I said, the, the, the capital that is invested in creating this inefficiency is just so large. And it also helps promoters charge a premium for a variety of things, right? Uh, it becomes a natural inclination for them to go out and do this, right? What's your sense of it? How do you read this, right? Is this, are we going to go back to that normal again? Uh, or do you think this is a shift which is permanent, right? This has happened yeah. forever. How do you read this? So, yeah. So what has happened, uh, the way we understand it, uh, Ashu, is um, uh, the schools pre-pandemic were offline. Sure. And there were players who tried to come and do interventions and the schools were just not interested. Sure. Right. Um, then came pandemic and the schools became online during the pandemic. Now, Whenever the pandemic is over, it looked like it was over three months back, but uh, whenever it is over now after Omicron, right. it will not go back to being offline. Mm -hmm. It will go back to something uh, that we call as the hybrid school. Right. So, and it is very 
important to uh, different people have different ideas about what hybrid may be, may look like sure. uh, see what is and there's a reason for it so when you say uh, hybrid uh, there are some things that will not happen online right one of those things is that daily regular instruction will not happen online right you know school children have to go to the school physically mm-hmm. the reason is that you know the way to understand the school is it's a bundle of uh, education daycare and a social network right, right? these are all right. three services bundled together uh, for for a child and um, comes at a very cheap cost actually to the parent um, now parents will have to send the children physically to schools it is important mm-hmm. but during pandemic what schools have learned is that there is so much out there that is there in the digital world that can become part of the pedagogy right so uh, you know can children learn english speaking right on uh, using technology mm-hmm. right i would say 95% of the private schools their sales pitch to their parents is that the child will be able to speak english better if he goes to a private school right that is the aspiration that is why the schools label themselves as the english medium school if you go to a place like uh, uh, you know banda uh, you right. know the school name will be written in hindi and the <laughs> english medium school will be written in hindi huh? but that is the level of aspiration that people have while uh, talking about the school right so but this english speaking can be taught using technology right uh, people can discover uh, you know uh, video can be a very important part of uh, 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 you know pedagogy uh, people have realized this so these things will continue to remain part of the school ecosystem right. these technology solutions will be used by schools to complement the offline pedagogy that will be the nature of the uh, you know the hybrid school so to say right. so for example the uh, publishers mm-hmm. uh, who are giving books in the schools they also have reasonably high quality digital content mm-hmm. but they have never been able to get the schools to consume that in the school ecosystem right now after pandemic schools have realized no you know children actually enjoy watching a small video on photosynthesis photosynthesis so right. if you're teaching photosynthesis in the class or the solar system in the class that can accompany with a home assignment where children spend 5 minutes watching a solar system video i mean it can they can watch a solar system video where they're kind of trying to see the sun and the uh, planets going around uh, and they can remember that for the rest of their life right that is the, the books cannot be that immersive right so right. these schools have realized that all of this content is out there now it is for some technology players to come in and allow the school to kind of send some of this content do some of this interactive english exercises math practice exercises on a digital platform and that is the nature of the hybrid school that is what we think is going to happen here yeah. interesting well uh, you know when you talk of education right uh, i think any of us talk of education right i think it becomes important the quality of teacher and teaching right uh, and i think that's that's a that's the most critical piece in the entire scheme of things right uh, and you know more often than not exposure of the teacher essentially and the interest of the teacher you know help student you know uh, basically become more interested in those topics right now when you talk of the kind of schools that you talk about right uh, you know it's a job that a lot of people like uh right uh, they're not necessarily motivated right uh yeah. they're not necessarily like you said right and, and in teaching and learning right i mean you know outcome is amorphous right it's got there's no shape to it right uh, you only start to realize the impact of it over a period of time right how do you tackle that right while you digitally enabled all of this right you brought the school on this the system right how do you ensure that the teacher is motivated or tracked right or there is a course correction that can be brought in on his or her teaching right to ensure that the impact is important because you know that's essentially what all of this is about right would love to understand yes. a little more about how are you tackling that particular piece it's a very very deep question uh, on how do you get the teacher who is the underpaid overworked person in the whole education industry right. i mean 
a lot of people do not realize how little the private school teachers are paid right. uh, compared to the government school uh, counterparts we are talking about you know uh, private school teachers making less than what a security guard sure. makes uh, standing outside uh, uh, you know guarding a building uh, the, fee, the 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 salary levels are ridiculous and mm-hmm. that also reflects in the kind of effort that lot of our teachers are putting there are some great teachers out there who are who are teachers because they are super motivated they are excited about being with the children but a whole lot of teachers are there because um, it's a job that is available uh, you can kind of uh, still come back uh, to your household before your husband uh, comes back from work right. and give divide time equally between family right. and work so it's kind of a convenient job and lot of teachers are doing it conveniently right um and over time on this side what is happening is the job is becoming harder because the government are bringing in reforms they are asking for more and more data so you know the work of the teacher is actually continuously increasing so the way to get the teachers to use technology is in our mind very very clear you mm-hmm. have to realize that you have to make the life of teacher easier right if you want teacher to spend more time on something you have to save her two to three times more time on it right right i'll give you very simple uh, uh, you know things around it so for example we allow on the yolo application mm-hmm. for teachers to take the attendance right now what happens because of that is the it's a very big problem uh, the school bunking and uh, like i also used to do it occasionally but very very rarely but apparently <laughs> right in in bulk of the schools when you go to mass market of india you know non uh, you know del- this uh, delinquent behavior is very common so much so that their education starts getting hampered the right. children are not turning up to the school parents think that they have gone to school right so uh, our app gives a way for the school to communicate to the uh, parent that your child is not there in the class right now the process for that was back breaking for the school earlier Right. because a teacher will make a list then it will go to the ad, uh, like you know the computer operator give the list and the computer operator will upload it and then an sms will go out right all of that has gotten replaced to like just tapping this child number 1 2 3 you know ashu pallav both of them are absent and um, right. you know message goes automatically right. to our parents saying right. that we are missing in the class so we save the teacher like about 12 to 15 minutes a day Right. by just what just you know by spending one minute to two minutes on the app and right. this i am talking about one particular feature every single thing that we do on our app we try to think about how much time have we saved for the teacher right. by doing this interesting right so can we uh, like you know if we want the teacher to share a content uh, the teacher will be able to see relevant uh, content that in a single tap can be sent to the entire class right in fact so much so that you can automatically also send reminders to the children who have not opened it up interesting so the teacher is kind of um, you know uh, slowly starts to realize that you know this piece of technology is not uh, all that bad actually it is good right. for me right uh, right uh, and then um, uh, so we have seen kind of um, very very good adoption coming in from the teachers uh, to a point where uh, teachers start advocating to the school that uh, you know we should adopt so they're kind of you know the way uh, the yolo platform works for a school a lot of different things so right. you can do for example uh, english speaking on our platform the way english speaking works uh, ashu is very interesting the teachers do not have to do anything right and still the children are learning english because what has happened is that it's a very nice uh, course packaged into the mobile application right and it goes to the students as a homework right um, so let us say if uh, you know sangeeta ma'am is the english teacher children will get a message from sangeeta ma'am saying that you have to do this exercise right children do that exercise and if they don't do it they get a reminder from sangeeta ma'am that you have not done it interesting and all all sangeeta madam is doing is she gets to see a report saying out of the 30 children in my class these are the three naughty guys who have not done it and 27 <laughs> have done it so she spends like 2 minutes to 3 minutes a week right and the entire program is running the when we look at the cohorts of this this is beautiful right and the uh, the teacher is getting all the accolades 
for running the program, but reality is teacher does not have to do anything. That right. is the power of technology. And That's that amazing. is something uh, that I would say was not possible five years back or even, uh, we are definitely not five years back because in the last five years, the penetration of smartphones have crossed a critical mass. Right. The WhatsApp and Geo have made sure that every single teacher knows how to operate it and how right. to you know kind of share stuff, handle right. content. So that critical mass has come and then therefore it has now become possible to become go mass market in, right. in a country like India. Right. So that is where we are sitting. Interesting. Well, what, are, what are some of the things that you do to sort of for, for teachers to upgrade themselves, right? Because you know that's something which has become important uh, today and especially in the COVID era, right? Uh, given that you know all of us are pretty much you know, we've become one homogeneous market, right? I think all of us are consuming from just about three, four, five screens, right? Uh, in a very predictable environment, right? Uh, but the good part is because there is content which has been getting developed almost everywhere, we today have access to, I mean, that regional arbitrage, that physical arbitrage that existed, right? has kind of gone away, which essentially means that the exposure and the understanding of students is far superior. The questions that they have are far superior, right? That essentially means that the teachers are up to date uh, with a lot of what is happening, right? Right. Uh, is there something which is happening on that front, uh, which helps them constantly upgrade themselves? Uh, is there a hand holding that is happening? Left or understand? That. Yeah. So, but so we uh, like you know. So, uh, I mean, we are also uh, limited by uh, what we think we can do. So, uh, our approach over here is to actually partner with uh, organizations which can help the teachers get trained. So, our sure. training to the teachers is limited to making sure that they are comfortable using our application. Right. But there is so much more in terms of their evolution as a teacher that needs right. to happen. Right. So we are happier actually doing partnerships with organizations like Senta, who specialize into a teacher training. So we are right now uh, working uh, with Cambridge on a particular partnership where teachers are able to upgrade themselves and also get certified in the process. Right. Uh, so there's a, uh, about like a 50 hour uh, course that teachers go through to become more up to date with what the, uh, you know, the new pedagogies are there, how they can kind of bring in technology and internet to teach better. Right. So we're kind of more like facilitator there. That is not the core area uh, where we have a lot to offer ourselves. Interesting. Interesting. And I think, I think you cannot, uh, you know, continue to do everything yourself. I think you're, I think at the end of the day, you have so to our be approach is, to in... huh, That is correct. Our approach is very, very clearly Ashu, a platform approach right. where we say, you know, we are the distributors here. So uh, uh, like, you know, there's a lot of, uh, so I think every week we have this reminder meeting in the company where we say <laughs> there is so much to, to do here, right. but we have to realize that uh, what is our role? Our role is that of an enabler or a platform or a right. distributor. We take the best of things to the masses. So if, they, right. if somebody has a great teacher training program, we would love to partner and right. take it to all of these schools. Right. Uh, if you have a great educational content, please bring it on Yulo and we'll take it to everybody. Our exactly. job is to make sure that the school comes online and every single child in the school has got the Yulo app. That Super. is what we do. Interesting. You know, Pallav, uh, I'm going to, uh, we're, we're getting towards the end of our conversation, right? I'm going to move into some, some of the interesting parts, something that we've not touched upon, right? Which is the development of the student beyond school, right? Uh, you know, this conversation essentially has been centered around school education, right? But I think, Yolo offers a lot more, right? Uh, you are there, the child's partner beyond school as well, right? I'd love to understand what are some of the things that are happening on that front, right? Uh, so, for example, English speaking, you know, you kind of mentioned about it, right? But my sense is it's not limited to school and the teacher. It, it goes beyond that, right? What are some of the things that yeah. happen beyond school curriculum? The way, way we look at uh, Yolo is that it's a, uh, a social learning platform. Sure. where children uh, do a lot of um, uh, after-school activities along with their school friends. Mm -hmm. um, so these after-school activities uh, uh, vary from doing, uh, you know, hobby classes sure. uh, to kind of uh, participating in various quizzes. There are inter-school contests that are there. There is a lot of interesting stories. There are also a lot of uh, games that you can play on our platform. And all of these games have been very carefully picked up to... Uh, you know, uh, teach something specific. Uh, and then as you're doing that, uh, you would also see how you're ranking in your class and stuff like this. It's a very right. social environment that you're able to replicate because you're coming from the school, right? So if you look at the social network of the child, right. it, is, uh, it has got the school friends, it has got the home friends. Uh, and maybe, you know, my, 
my cousins and my professional <laughs> friends their kids would also be the social network of my child right the strongest over there is the school right so if you can kind of get the child to do stuff along with the school friends in the online environment it is crazy so i'll give right. you an example so we do for example uh, in our live hobby classes we do uh, bharatnatyam classes recently and what we did was we allowed uh, people to share their submissions with each other right so we kind of wow. opened it up more so like earlier people were uh, just sharing it with the teacher right. then we kind of made us so made it available socially right we started seeing 100% submissions week after week after week this is wow. insane i would see right. anything like that so people are not only attending the class after the class they make a video of themselves a kind of uh, doing this thing and then submitting it back on the platform that's amazing insane response so when you kind of bake in social um, along with uh, education it becomes a killer so yeah so very interesting stuff we uh, other kind of stuff that we do in the after school is one of the endeavors that we have something that i believe in very strongly right. is that when you kind of talk to people from small town they say you know hamara to exposure hi nahi hai right and hamko pata hi nahi hai ki duniya mein kya chal raha hai kya ho sakta hai right right so the kids at large need to be inspired to you know aspire for something so we have a series called inspire to aspire interesting um, what we do over there is we will get people who have been achievers in their life so we right. will have people like abhinav bindra um, or uh, sakshi malik nahi right. kind of gold medalist or uh, they, they one recently we got a guy from nasa who came in and talked to the children right about uh, uh, what they do and i think about like you know tier 3 tier 4 cities in this country right. children coming the principals are making sure that their school children come you know they saying where else will they get an opportunity to ask a question to abhinav bindra right right uh, that how what how did he prepare himself right uh, what for when he failed how did it look like when he succeeded how did it look like? right so stuff like that all happening digitally on the platform in the after school hours there's a lot that you can do there interesting yeah. pallav you know you actually walked into my next question right which is uh, you know and and i and i actually wanted to ask you a question around bharat right because one of course you know uh, i think both of us possibly have our roots in bharat i think that's number one right number two i think it's a massive area to be sort of uh, you know work forward worked upon right uh, now when you talk of bharat and you you know, you you kind of answered that in a in a certain form in way right uh, i'll still go on to ask you this question right now one of the biggest problems when you talk of bharat right in a tier 2 tier 3 city is that the kids they get disoriented very quickly right uh, because you know unlike a tier a city motivation right where you know the parents are so much more exposed they're hooked on right they know you know what do you want as an outcome it's a very outcome driven society tier 2 tier 3 is not right uh, tier 2 tier 3 is more about struggle right more about you know engineer ban jao doctor ban jao very very you know defined uh, uh, you know channels right and paths uh, a kid loses uh, motivation right in the process right the creativity gets killed in the process right you've answered in a some form and way right where you're giving this exposure right but what what are you doing to sort of ensure because my sense is a large part of adoption in what you're doing at yolo is happening across these cities right and and i think some of the far flung areas right that we've not one couldn't have imagine right uh, is also kind of now on your platform what are you doing to ensure that those kids are hooked on the motivation keeps on right and and you know all if you realize all of what what i've asked right we teach a motivation beat they uh, you know this exposure that you kind of mentioned of essentially is to ensure that the student is motivated to keep pursuing right yeah. it goes on from one point yeah. to another point to another point right it's a process it's a journey right what are some of the things that you're doing to keep that motivation on right because tier 2 is much larger and i'm sure it's it's much larger in your scheme of things as well that is correct right i think uh, education is fundamentally around motivation and uh, we worry a lot about how do we make sure that uh, children remain motivated in this long journey so the way to do that is one is of course uh, you have to cater to the long tail of interest that people have and being a platform allows you to do that so you can kind of have very very different cuts on the platform so people find different things that are of interest to them and then it is easier to remain motivated about things that interest you so right. some people are interested about uh, art some people are uh, interested about Uh, maybe uh, you know dance or some people are interested about just the science and the general knowledge and stuff right. like that 
So that right. is one dimension, creating the longer tail. And the other thing is to, I think, create an environment where you can structurally motivate the child. Right. So can you bring in teachers to play a role? Can you bring in the social network of the child? A lot of children would go do a chess class because their best friend likes to play chess. Right. And that is a form of motivation that works for children. So uh, can you, so our endeavor is to create these support structures around the child. So one is to give a lot of opportunities to the right. child uh, to pursue their interest and then have these support structures that make sure that the interest does not die down. So that is what we do as a platform. Interesting. And I know it's a, it's not, it's not a place where you have clear answers. I think it's a, it's a process where you have to keep engineering, right? As you go yes. along. Right? And I think, I think, I think, but you're doing a fair play in the sense that, you know, I think your role in, in is very clear. And I think through the course of our conversation, you've clearly highlighted that, right? That we are a platform, right? Uh, we stop at some point. We have to enable others to come in and, and to serve, take over. Right? Yeah. To take over. Right. Yeah. And I think that that's phenomenal. Right. Uh, Pallav, uh, my second last question, you know, question in the conversation today, how I want this conversation to go on, but, uh, you know, I'm going to save some of, some of the interesting pieces for our next conversation, hopefully soon. Uh, you know, what are the numbers that you are, are at, right? Of course, uh, you know, there are some numbers which are publicly available. I'd love you to give us a, you know, uh, uh you know, a, a sight into the numbers, uh, more importantly, the impact, right. Uh, that you've been able to create, right. Uh, across the larger, you know, reach that you've built, uh, and, uh, more importantly, what are what are the next two years like, right? Uh, I'd love to ask you a five-year question, but I think two years, I think, is appropriate in the current context, right? So, what are, what 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 would that be? So, so we are uh, Ashu currently sitting at about uh, five thousand schools with a population of about twenty lakh students that we reach out to. Wow! Um, and uh, you know, when you kind of look forward two years, we think we can be sitting at ten times this number. We are looking wow. at uh, two crore students across fifty thousand schools in this country, wow. and India has got like you know four four lakh uh, private schools in this right. country. Uh, we think we can get to fifty thousand schools uh, who are using uh, Yulo in and out, mm -hmm. and roughly about uh, you know, twenty million kids uh, who are connected to the Yulo network. And the relationship that we have with the school is a very sticky relationship. So uh, when a school comes and gets onboarded and the, pay, uh, and the child downloads the app, sure. it does not go away. It's a one-way street. Right. So you form a relationship. That relationship lasts for 10 to 12 years while you're still in right. school. Right. So it's a sticky relationship with 20 million kids in two years from now. That is what we're looking at. Interesting. And are you looking at some cross sales as well? And, uh, and I know it's not, it's not, I'm possibly diluting the, the essence of a conversation, right? But I'm sure that's an important matrix uh, to you, right? Because, you know, that's essentially what your model is hinged on, right? Uh, it, it's potential cross sales of a variety of other things, right? Uh, are there targets around that or uh, broader uh, ranges that you've so, kind of defined for yourself? So, yeah, so I think um, where we are in our journey, um, this kind of still early. So we create a lot of uh, what we call engagement right. uh, where children are spending time uh, on our platform. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is not to try and monetize it too early. Right. Um, so, you know, so the, I would say the cross selling is not happening, but uh, we are bringing in a lot of content from partners who want to create reach to this audience. Interesting. So we are not uh, selling, selling right now. We think that, uh, you know, sometimes when you try to sell too early, your uh, focus changes from uh, becoming uh, from creating more reach to trying to uh, harvest, monetize. To, yes. uh, monetize too early, it uh, sometimes becomes um, conflicting. So, for example, what would happen is um, uh, if we were to focus on monetization too early, we would want to go to the schools closer to the top of the pyramid because, of course, the parents have a lot of disposable income. Right. But reality is that, uh, you know, India, 12 crore people are uh, in private schools. Right. And uh, the parents have demonstrated that they have ability to spend on their child by not sending their child to a government school. So there is money available there to spend. Why should they not spend on uh, a digital platform like you know? There is no reason. Right. But if you try to figure that answer today, you might not find an answer. I'm going to actually talk more about the slugfest which is going to happen between an ecosystem like YOLO that you kind of building, you're plugging in, right? And the larger brands that are getting established outside, right? Because they are in a you know, there's a unique advantage and a vantage point that you are sort of sitting at, right? Uh, which they don't, but then 
they're spending the kind of dollar that they are right uh, and I'd yeah, absolutely see- I'd I'd love to see that right uh, come to four and possibly we're going to cover that in the next conversation. But well, the last question in our conversation today, more personal, right? Uh, you know, you've been you've been you've been a serial entrepreneur, right? Uh, you've gone from doing one company to another to to doing your own, right? Uh, it's it's not usually easy, right? It's fairly difficult, right? Uh, you can get you you kind of get continued to question pretty much all the time, right? Uh, and you don't you know coming from a success, you don't want to get into a failure, right? Uh, the pressure is always higher. Uh, uh you know i would have loved to ask you some specific questions on that one but i would rather just keep it very generic right what is that advice that you have for for entrepreneurs right i mean i mean india couldn't be at an exciting point right uh, going forward i think next decade is possibly that of entrepreneurs that of aspirants uh, of innovation right what advice would you want to give out uh, given you've done this three times right uh, what would that be well i would say that uh, it is uh... you know uh, it's it's a it's uh, to build successful companies uh, what we see uh, as successful people breaking out there is a there is a very interesting mix of luck timing and hard work right and hard work is in your control but uh, the other two sometimes are not so people should not uh, take it personally give their best shot i think india is at very very interesting space where lot of stuff is going to happen right so uh, you know people should depending upon their own risk appetite choose to be part of the journey either as a founder or being as part of a core team both right. of them are equally exciting if you are part of the right team it is as much fun right so if you are right. part of the indian cricket team winning the world cup it does not matter whether you are the captain or the or not <laughs> you will have a great time right. right and i think that is how uh, my advice to the young people would be be part of a great winning team and uh, you know play your heart out it's a great time to be in india actually right now super super and palav you know i i can't i mean both of us are parents right uh, and i would want this opportunity for you to address the parents as well right uh, you know what is happening is that i think our practices are not necessarily as parents in the right direction right we're not giving them the space and the roots that is required right we're actually sort of channelizing them in a certain form and way right uh, uh, i think what would you want to give it out Uh, to the parents who are going to listen to this right uh, you know technology is for good uh, but shouldn't become regimental right that's my take right what what would be your take right to the parents who are going to be watching this and the parents are having including myself are having a very tough time right now trying to figure out what does this mobile phone mean in the life of my child is it good is it bad is it evil right. is it uh, like a superpower and we are struggling with it um i think uh, reality is like it or not it is going to stay here for good right. and the uh, and its role in the life is already only going to go up from here so as parents i think what we need to uh, think harder on how do we uh, get a get the best out of this thing uh, for our children just like our parents uh, worried about uh, you know uh, what channels and what programs we should be watching on the tv right um we should worry about what children are doing on mobile phone and maybe worry less about whether they are on mobile phone or not but worry more about what they are doing on the mobile phone right so you know it is not about how much of screen time is good or bad i think it is about what screen time is good or bad and i think right. parents need to start investing time uh into making that differentiation it's going to be an effort but that is what needs to be done interesting pallav on that note i you know i would love to sort of uh, you know how i want this conversation to go on right uh, but i think i think trying to be within the time limits i'm going to bring this conversation to a close but like i said right i want these conversations to keep going right there's just so much of depth so much of intelligence you know i think it's unfair right one conversation just about an hour you know there's little that you can scrape right india is a large market it's a complex market right you have to sort of break it down at so many layers to understand it but i'm going to save some of that for our next conversation Thank you sure. so much. It was a pleasure to have you. I think what you're doing is phenomenal. Uh, I think there needs a system which can really cut that arbitrage that has existed, uh, uh, you know, across markets. Uh, you know, the aspiration needs to be fulfilled, and we need the right channels, right? Uh, and I think YOLO is essentially playing a very, very critical role, right? Uh, it's really taking away the divide, the societal divide that possibly exists, right? i think it's taking it away it's 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 bringing education to a common platform which is available to all uh, accessible to all 
uh, you know, of course, with, with a few elements that will get figured in the process, but uh, I think the intentions and the motivation is right, right? So with that, Allah, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you with us. Look forward to having you much sooner and discussing a lot more exciting aspects around this particular bit. Thank you, Ashu. Thank you for having me here. Thanks a lot. Thank you.